Hello everyone, uh, welcome to my channel Salesforce Musketeer. In today's video, we are going to learn about new topic Salesforce Connect. It is um, a, one of the data integration uh, pattern, which is virtualization pattern. So in this one, we will connect uh, Salesforce with another Salesforce org or with the third party application without residing data in Salesforce via Salesforce Connect. So let's get started. Before we uh, jump into understanding how uh, what is Salesforce Connect, we should first of all know that when should we uh, consider Salesforce Connect in our system. So if you want to connect your Salesforce with third party application like Java or .NET, but you don't want to save data in Salesforce org, then yes, Salesforce Connect is a right choice. But then another question comes whether the third party application supports OData. Uh, that uh, so that we can use OData adapter to connect with there without and writing any code just using points uh, and click and configurations so in that case uh, it saves a lot of time so if if they support OData then yes it will it, it is a best choice but if they do not support OData then um, for example, if legacy, if it is a legacy system and uh, not supporting OData, data, then in that case, uh, we cannot rule out Salesforce Connect. We can still use Salesforce Connect, but in that case, we have to code. We have to use Apex connector uh, rather than using OData data adapter. We will use Apex connector, code it there, and then we can uh, utilize the third-party application data and uh, show it on the Salesforce. But if middleware is already there, then you don't need to write Apex Connector. They can do a job for you. And all you need to do is just use Salesforce Connect uh, and do configuration to connect with third party application. Some key considerations why when you think of Salesforce Connect, one is that it is used to display search and modify data that is stored in the third party application, but you can display it on Salesforce. You can search it on Salesforce, put a filter on the data, and you can modify also those data. And that will reflect or immediately update it in the third party application. Second uh, consideration we need to have if client says that um, data is already there in SAP, data is already there in People, so we don't want to put data again in Salesforce. We just want to display in Salesforce. Then we then this is the best choice as we do not need to duplicate the data in Salesforce. Uh, it is it should be considered when we are only dealing with the small amount of data and it's real time. So whenever change is made at, either at the Salesforce end or at the third party application and they both are in sync, it will reflect on the corresponding system immediately. So you will always see the latest data. Uh, when you create a, when you uh, use Salesforce Connect, it creates an external object for you, which is just like, or I would say, a cousin of Salesforce object. It's similar to that. It also creates an external ID, which is uh, important here. So external ID is will be used to connect to the uh, standard or custom Salesforce object. I will show this in the demo how we can use uh, leverage external ID to connect with the other object. In background, it makes a call out in REST API to another Salesforce org. So in background, it used REST API, uh, which happens in the background, so we don't need to worry about it. Last is sharing rules don't apply to the rows you see. Only thing which you can control is OWD, and uh, you can control the field level security. So there are three types of Salesforce Connect. One is cross org adapter. Cross org is used to connect uh, one org of Salesforce with the another org of Salesforce. File Connect is used, uh, which is another Salesforce Connect, is used to connect Salesforce with the uh, file management system, for example, Google Drive. Then the third is OData adapter. For using, uh, this is being used to connect with third party application, such as Java application. Now, uh, if we talk about the license of Salesforce, with one license, you can connect with five orgs. So if you want to connect with seven uh, Salesforce orgs, you need two licenses. But if you connect or need to connect with three Java applications, then you need three licenses. 
uh, we will talk about Salesforce Connect limitation after demo. I think it would be better if I show you this after demo. Uh, so let's quickly jump into a demo. In this demo, we will do three things. First, I will show in Salesforce Org B uh, account data from which is uh, the data stores in uh, is residing in Org A, but I'm showing it in Org B without even saving any account data in Org B. Second, then I will also bring another object contact from org A and I will show it on org B and then I will establish a relationship between contact and account and then in that case you will see the accounts related list all the contact data. So let's jump into a demo. So on my screen if you see the red theme here which is you can consider this as a Salesforce org A and on another tab I have a blue theme uh, uh, org where, where you can consider this as a Salesforce org B. Now on org B, I want to show this account data. So what I will do here is I will go to here and click on setup. So once you are on setup, uh, you just need to write external. And then you need to click on external data source. Once you are on external data source, click on new external data source. And you need to choose the adapter. I'll say the give, give the name as Salesforce A Connect as we are, as this is going to connect with Salesforce A. Type here is see we have multiple types O data 2.0 4.0 but we need to use cross org as we are going to connect with another Salesforce org. The login will remain this. Uh, I mean URL will remain this as a login dot Salesforce dot com and enable search. Do you just want to see the data? then use enable search you can also filter out that data in the list view but if you just also want to update the data then also click this then any change you make on org b will reflect on org a so we have per user identity type name principle uh, i will not go into detail of or 2 where i will have consumer key that is a part not in scope that i will cover in other video of my identity and access here i'll just go in name principle and I will give password here I'll give this and I'll get my password I got my password here remember you need to put password and after that you need to put security token then click on save once you click on save then uh, validate and sync button will appear um, so just see external object currently is none now I will click on validate and sync Let me get account object. And as we are here, let me also get a contact object so that I don't need to go back again to get the contact. So I'm getting account and contact both. I will click on sync. I could have chosen this in background. So this takes a little bit of time. Uh, in few seconds, you can go to external object and check what are the objects have been created. So right now it's taking time. I'll just refresh. So after refresh, I see account and contacts. Um, I just need to deploy both of them. I'll click on edit and deploy them. I just need to check the checkbox. So if you see, it looks like exactly the, the custom object. I'll click on deploy it. One thing to remember is that you can also create a report from external object by clicking on here. I'll do the similar for contact. So I did for both of them. Uh, now I will create a quickly tabs for account so that I can show you here. I click on tab. You need to click on custom object tabs and then you need to select object which is account and tab style here as well. Click on next. Default on for all profiles and which let me give it to sales and service let's click on save so the account tab is created let me just go to sales
see i do see this account object but this is not the external object account so mine would be here which i just created uh, let me refresh this one more time so it was not coming in more so what i did i just went here and add add more item add more item and then i added the account and then i started getting the account here so if you i can verify that this is the account i was looking for so if you can see here that if you see here i have account underscore underscore x which tells that this is the external object i was looking for now i will go and click on all so by default it will come with two columns account name and display url this display url is nothing but from our salesforce org let me click on this one It's opening in the background but in the meanwhile I'll click on this Accenture and show you the details here so if you see on Salesforce org B uh, we see the billing address like this and we get all the details from org A I will also show this on org A which is a red theme org so in org A we see the same details if I just modify it on org B let's say I modify the phone number and append some numbers to it let's say five six seven click on save so i'll go and check here refresh this page on our game so i see the phone number has got updated from org p now as you know that um i have um account external object and contact external object so I just want to have a contact object being shown here so what will I do in that case I will simply go again to my external objects by the way I'm not showing how contact object you can see it on the tab it's similar to what we did for a uh, account here we are just trying to show the how we can establish a relationship I'll click on contact so if you see this field this field is important um, so basically this field can be used to establish connection but what I'll do is uh, instead of using this I'll create my own so that I can explain you how it works I'll delete this one And I will click on new. We have three type of relationships here. Uh, so lookup, you already know what it is. So external lookup is something when we want to establish a relationship between two external objects. So in this demo, we are trying to establish a relationship between con contact underscore underscore x with uh, account underscore underscore x. So both are external. So we are going to use external lookup. But if we had wanted, if we uh, wanted to establish contact relation, uh, external object contact underscore x with account, which is uh, resides in Salesforce, then we would use indirect. Now I'll go with the external, click on next. Here I'll choose account, click on next, 18. Uh, this is very important, but I'm not giving it right now. So let me see here. What should I? What will happen if I not give it? I'm not giving it to show you the error, and then I'll fix that error. So external alias is account, and let me see how it looks here. let me refresh it so if you see it here it contact related list came for a second and then I started receiving this error and it's because of the um, external column ID we did not give it's not matching let me show you the error first so that you understand what's happening in the background I'm going to relate it the contact will come for a sec 
and then it is not able to display. If you see here, it's trying to query this part in the external system and it's using the uh, WSDL here, I would say somewhere. Please reference your WSDL. So basically, WSDL is used in the background and it's trying to do this. And in the external, if I query, put this query in my org A, I will receive the same error because there it expects account ID, not account. So how we can fix this? Uh, I'll click on edit. Uh, I'll put account ID here. And click on save. Let me see if that has fixed or not. So yeah, here we go. We got our contacts here. So if you see, if you get that kind of error, you just need to do is, you must check your external alias, your external column ID. Now we are receiving this. So in demo, we have seen how to create account, contact and establish a relationship between them. And now we will move to another adapter. We have learned Salesforce, a cross org adapter. Now this is a OData adapter. It is also known as Open Data Protocol. If you want to learn more about it, then there's a website, odata.org. We can go there. Let me take you there and show you a little bit there. And the next things which I have here, I will explain it there only. For example, the I have um, this URL as an example. And then I will, actually there are two type of OData adapter, 2.0, 4.0. Uh, 2.0 supports XML and JSON, where 4.0 only supports JSON. And let me now go there and explain a little bit more. You can read this description um, at your own speed, but I will uh, quickly explain um, the main things here. So, OData, Open Data Protocol, defines best practice for building and consuming RESTful API. It helps you focus on your business logic while building RESTful API, without building RESTful API, without having to worry about the approach of defined request and response header, status code, and HTTP. So if you if you see my other video of REST, uh, how we can use callout, we are using HTTP header, HTTP uh, methods, and everything. All those things, we don't have to do it in here because OData adapter will take care of all those things, building the HTTP request and the header. It, that happens in the background. Uh, so as the REST principle goes, everything is a resource. As simple start, let's see how resource can be retrieved from OData RESTful API. The sample service used is TripIn, which simulates the service of Open Trip Management. Uh, so basically, the, there's a link here, OTRIP service. And if I open this, this will give the resource which means all the people who are going to this trip and service and basically using o data adapter uh, they are just using this to get the response i'll open this here to show you how it looks so if you see here um, this gives you the information about the people and using OData Connector, you can retrieve that information about people, their address infos. That's how, that's something similar we are going to do using OData Adapter and Salesforce. We'll be, uh, we, I will provide a link which supports OData and then using that, I'll be able to show data on Salesforce system. I'll jump into demo. In this demo, um, to keep it simple, and I think Trailhead has the best example to show OData connector, and I'm gonna use that link to show how we can use OData adapter using Salesforce Connect. I'll copy this link and open it. So if you see here, uh, this is the module that we are going to cover in our demo. And this in the setup, we will go to this Whatever the information is, I'll do it in a demo. All we I need from here is the link, this URL. That is a similar thing you will get from your third-party application, which is Java or .NET. You need to ask them for the link. 
and let's read about this a little bit uh let me see yeah one thing i wanted to tell you here is okay here use salesforce connect to access data in the backend such as sap or micro in this task we are going to connect uh, to a sample data running on heroku so this is a heroku app i'll open this for you so if you see in this one uh, we got the xml and this is atom which shows the schema of how it looks like from there here we will create an external object for order and order details you can also go inside order and see the fields so in the link i have provided if you see here i provided order and then i get the order information okay so let's see in our demo i will click on new external data source and give order db as a name and type i will give o data 2.0 i will provide the link let me copy the link here's the link let me take out this so enable search format it's atom that's what we saw there it's atom pub it's not json atom pub is nothing but xml and we are not going to use high data volume uh are we going to use writable external object uh, i we don't need to do that i'll just show you how we can retrieve it authentication i will use uh anonymous i will not provide any authentication as we were able to see data without any providing uh, credentials so i will keep it simple i'll save it and it's very simple if you see i'm not doing any coding just click and configuration and i clicked on validate and sync so whatever we see uh, the details in the url those are displayed here so what do we want to create here we want to create order and order detail. I'll say sync in background and sync. Let's give a few seconds and I'll check the external objects. So I see my order and order details are created. Give me a few seconds. I will deploy it. Now after I deploy this, what I want to do is I want to associate this order with the account so that if I go to this Accenture and I should see the orders here in the related list. And how can I do that? So I need to establish a connection between account and order. So I will click, go to edit. Oh, I clicked on this one. I should click on the link. So if you see customer ID, instead of being it a number, I will just click on edit and I will change the field type customer ID will be response will basically link us link our orders with the account and the, in the last demo we were seeing that external lookup we used to connect with two external objects but here we are, have to connect a, a Salesforce object I mean uh, object which is sites in Salesforce with the external objects so we will use indirect lookup i click on next i will choose okay i am not getting related to you might face the same thing because i have not done one step so i need to have create an external id field in the account object so let me go there and do that i click on details oh, I'm on wrong so I will go to fields and click on new I'll choose customer ID as number. Next, customer. 
to use customer ID and length as 18 this is good important thing that we need to set this up so I'll choose this I can make it unique and click on next for all profiles next yes that's fine so now we have created external ID now we should be able to see it here I'll click on cancel and come back again change field type external lookup next here relate to if you see account is coming I'll click on account I'll choose 18 and save oops I wanted to connect click on next to give it to all profile let me do it in the background this was the step I missed. Let me do it for all. Next. And now save it. So, on the last step, if you see, I have added order in the account related list layout. So, let me check that. So, I'm on account. Let me go here, refresh it. I think there's one uh, mistake I did uh, it's not showing here because instead of indirect I chose external as I mentioned external is for extern to connecting two external objects together but we wanted to connect uh, the internal account a standard or custom object of Salesforce with the external objects so I had to choose I should have chosen this one indirect but we can fix this now and I'm getting account now it makes sense earlier it was related to it was uh, nothing was coming it was coming as blank and now account is coming and now it's asking for target field this is the field we created as an external ID I will choose this and click on next and next save it now after doing that I'm able to see order as a related list here but the reason now it's not uh, showing any orders here is because the customer ID which we have on the account is not matching with the customer ID there because external now it's using the external ID customer ID as external ID to link between two so let me go to that link this link where I'll provide order So here if I see customer ID, so I see number 8. If I provide number 8, then I might will be able to see that order for that customer. Now going to that account. This account and let me see if I see customer ID on this page layout or not. I see it here. Let me give number eight. Save it and then order should show up now. See, now we are able to see order with the display URL as this. You can bring more fields in just like we uh, work on the related list and we can show more fields from the external URL. When that completes our demo, uh, I told you we would come to Salesforce connect limitation after my demo so we'll quickly go through the limitations provided by Salesforce I copied this from uh, help.salesforce.com so it says that a maximum external object we can have per hour earlier it was 100 but now it's 200 but even if your uh, Salesforce org shows 100 just create, uh, create a case and they will increase your external object per hour to 200 maximum joins per query 
uh, across external objects and other type of objects you can have s4 and uh, maximum length of OR token that is issued by external 4000 ca characters maximum num new rows retrieved by sosl and salesforce search per hour so this is per hour limitation which is 100000 this does not apply to high data volume but high data volume has its own limitation when you have a checkbox check for high data volume then uh, it doesn't work with lightning so you need to use classic maybe uh, after some time or in future salesforce change this behavior uh, the maximum new rows retrieved or created per hour so there's also a limitation that only 100,000 rows you can retrieve or create per hour it does not apply to high data volume rows that are retrieved are only as a search result and are not open or edited so even if you're not open but you retrieve it this is the limitation you have per hour let's see some other limitations so other limitations are like record visibility you if you go to OWD you will see that uh, external object and you can also uh, have field level security on or off for each field but it does not support the sharing rules it display only top 25 records um, search on external object can only support text and text area you can only search tech, uh, text and text you cannot search by numbers so when you do circle or you write any yeah circle on the external object you cannot use these uh, things like include like exclude average count having some sync will override local changes such as length this is very important the when we click on validate and sync which we saw so any label change or any changes we have made to the field that will be overridden if we click on sync so we can avoid this if we can create an external object manually not through validate and sync these things are not supported by salesforce actually object external object uh, these are workflow rules process builder apex trigger record types the things which we have on standard or custom object that's how it differs from those objects uh, in standard object we can write apex trigger process builder we can even write uh, uh, yeah trigger process builder flows but here we cannot do all those things we cannot even write validation rules we cannot enable uh, field history tracking uh, cannot have master detail relationship roll up summary text area or formula field so this completes our demo um, i will also create another video where i will use custom adapter uh, when the uh, url provided by third party application doesn't support or data then how we can have a workaround by writing a code to show data virtually on our salesforce system thank you for watching my video till the end Please subscribe and like my video. Thank you.